Wonderful event of today. Shall we all rise up to pray? Today is a blessed day, a wonderful day. The day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and be glad in his presence. Bow down your head and begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Thank you for this hour. Our God has been a great God. Bow down your head and say, Jesus, thank you. Today, God is going to do wonders in our midst. Begin to say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you for your great power upon our lives. Individually, the Lord has been good. Our families, the Lord has been good. As community together, Caleb University community, God has been doing wonders in our midst. Give him praise, give him honor, give him adoration. Give him glory. Say, Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your preservation and protection over our lives, over our families, over our... For we decided this day, and here we are in your presence. Daddy, to you be glory. To you be honor. To you be adoration. Let's tell the Lord that today will be wonderful in his presence. The glory of the Lord will come down in our midst. The power of the Lord will be ministered unto us. Jesus will be seen in our lives because he's our anchor. He will do mighty, he will do wonders, he will do spectacular things. Things that are beyond human understanding. Tell him this morning and say, God, let your power come down. In order we we'll do today, we want to see your glory. Lord, minister life unto every one of us. Let your power come down. Right from now to the end of this program, oh Lord, because he's the only anchor we have. Jesus yesterday today and forever he has been from eternity to eternity we remain the same jesus is in our midst let's trust in you we depend on you we rely on you our focus is on you jesus we need you this morning we need you this day we know great things you're going to do in our midst because jesus is our anchor he is the lord because there will be rivers that will flow today rivers in our desert Whatever is the problem within, without, God is going to visit us in a wonderful way. Mighty God, we thank you. Everlasting Father, we bless you here. And those that will be watching from afar off, we believe grace that you will do your pleasure. You will perfect that which concerned us. Bless our Father, we say to you, be glory. As we commence, we pray your presence will be with us. You lead us, you guide us, and you minister laws unto us as we pray. Hallelujah! Somebody, the Bible says the shout inside is the wind inside. Come on, you know you're a winner in the house. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Shout hallelujah! Can, we, can you just pick a word from your heart this afternoon and just exhort him? Only you know what God has done for you. Only you have experienced him in any way. I want you to customize your worship this afternoon. The Bible says, if I believe that I, I will draw men unto myself. Can you just lift your voice and lift the name of the Lord high? Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor here this afternoon. He deserve the glory, he deserve the honor, he deserve our worship. Oh Jesus, we bless your holy name. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. Blessed be your name, oh God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all I 
see the stars I hear the rolling sun Thy path to us The universe There's play Everybody with your hands lifted up, can you sing? Then sing my soul. Lift your voice, sing. Come on, come on. 
Come on. a dancing side is a winning side so how many winners we have in the house come on you know you are a winner can you do something oh, for God my God joy going on say your love has taken over me Father I depend on you I have confidence in you in you oh Lord I put you say your love of kings and lord of law mighty man in bat oba 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 hey i'm up by what i'm doing why are you up i'm up by what are you wow baba say all the roots of toby all the roots of Baba, hey, I love you, Baba. I love you, Baba. I love you, Baba. I love 
the promises of God. Let's go. 
Found in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. Let's see what the Bible says there. Put a new thing. No, it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even away in the wilderness. Each time you call your together, I mean your children together for a special program, it is because we want to do something special. Our, our time will not be an exception in the name of Jesus that your power shall be present to heal, to save, and to set captives free. Lord, I'm praying, oh Lord Father, that by the reason of our gathering this morning. Lord, I pray that it will mark a new beginning of divine visitation, a new beginning of divine touch, that in the name that is above every other name, Father, testimony shall be the aftermath effect of this morning gathering. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, every woman, under the sound of my voice. Lord, I'm asking whatever may be the prevailing situation at individual's level, family level i mean a, a community level today oh lord father let rivers spring forth where desert has been established in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father for in jesus wonderful name we have given thanks amen amen rivers in the desert and i want us to know that there are some things that are peculiar i mean to the desert for example, the desert is a place of dryness. The desert is a place where nothing green grows. So everything in the desert is unappealing to the eye. Everything in the desert, I mean, is void of life. Everything in the desert is brown. Everything in the desert, I mean, is malnourished. And maybe that's describes the situation of an individual or of a family but i've come to announce to you today that in that desert experience of your life rivers will burst forth in the mighty name of jesus so i want us to know one thing that the desert experience is an unpalatable experience that is not the exclusive preserve of a few 
it is what every genuine child of God will go through at one point or the other. So maybe there is someone under the sound of my voice. Your experience, your family situation can be likened to going through the desert. I want you to know that the desert is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. And the ultimate end of every desert experience that God allows his children to go through, I mean, at the other end is testimony. At the other end is dancing. Oh, some people will forsake you. Some people will deny you. But Jesus has promised that when you go through it, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will not abandon you. And that is the joy. That is what gives us the resilience. I mean, to go through it, knowing fully aware well that he that keepeth his strength, neither speak nor slumber. So I'm announcing to someone, it may be academic desert, it may be financial desert, it may be marital desert, it may be business because the one who has the power of life and death, the one who is the resurrection and the life, has promised that he will not forsake you, is with you, is the Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is always present. Praise God. So, as children of God, when we go through it, when we will go through it, we don't know. The intensity of it, we don't know. But one thing we know is that we have a father whose hand is on the thermostat, who is able to regulate it. And he has promised that he will not allow the desert that is bigger than our faith to come to us. So which is to say, every desert you go through, heaven has measured it as your size. God determines the intensity of it. And God has promised that he will bring you out of it. And I'm sure that there is someone today, after today's prayer, you may be going through the desert and you have been forsaken and you have been abandoned. Some people have, I mean, they've denied you. I mean, they, 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 they are behaving as if they, they, they have not known you. But I want you to know that your story will change. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 16, 60, verse 15. He said, Though you were once despised and hated, with no one traveling through you, I will make you a beauty, I mean, I will make you beautiful forever, a joy to all generations. I mean, in other words, the Bible is saying, Though you have been forsaken and hated, no man wants to identify with you, no man wants to recognize you. God say, I'm going to shock your enemy. God is saying, I will make you a joy of many generations. In other words, there is going to be a, a, a shift. There is going to be a change. There is going to be a divine visitation. Your story will change. 
God will give you a new status. God will change your story. God Almighty is saying that those who have de denied you, those who have abandoned you, those who have forsaken you, those who don't want to be identified with you, by the time, I mean, your story changes, God says, they will come, I mean, to say we are sorry. And I'm speaking to someone today, you are feeling forsaken and forgotten. I've come to announce to you that the same people will come to apologize to you when your story changes in the mighty name of Jesus. So, desert experience is real. Desert experience is what every child of God will go through. But one thing, another thing I want you to know is that desert experience is not a permanent experience. It is only but for a moment. Whatever experience you are going through has a starting date. And definitely I want you to know it has an end date. And the understanding of that is what makes you to be strong. It's what makes you to hold on to God because you know that it is just but for a moment. According to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17, he said, for our present troubles are small. Our present troubles are small. So don't try to magnify that problem. In the eye of God, your present trouble is small. See it the way God sees it. Don't try to, 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 to describe it. God is saying our present troubles are small. Small in comparison to the great glory, to the enviable glory that will be the aftermath of this temporal small challenge that you are presently going through. So every child of God as an understanding that whatever I am going through, whatever God has allowed me to go through, I know it is nothing in comparison to the weight of glory that awaits me. And that is what gives us the strength. That is what gives us the joy to go through the storm and the desert experience, I mean, without becoming suicidal without resorting to self-arming because there are people who in the course of going through their desert experience i mean they begin to contemplate suicide some people become depressed some people begin to call for a pity party but as children of god who knows that we have a father who has promised that he will not leave us and he will not forsake us when we go through the desert experience be it in our marriage, be it in our career, be it in our academic, we know that whatever I am going through has an expiry date. Praise God. And with that, I mean, you are able to go through it knowing fully aware that my Redeemer lives. And I know that God will bring me out of this. He said, for our present trouble are small as more as more and won't last very long our present troubles are small they are not just small but the Bible say they won't last very long so i congratulate someone under the sound of my voice because i know that you can begin to see you are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel oh I, the word of the Lord says that the troubles we are going through, I mean, presently are very small and they will not last for very long. So I want you to know that you are coming to the end of that situation in the mighty name of Jesus. So, and the desert of life, just as I've said, is a place of isolation. It's a place of rejection. It's a place where you will be misunderstood. It's a place where, I mean, you, you, you look to, to, your, to, to, I mean, to your size and you discover that you are alone. But you are not alone because Jesus has promised that he will not leave you and he will not forsake you. And the understanding of the fact that you have divine presence 
is what gives you the reinforced confidence and boldness to go through it. And that was why David could declare in the book of Psalm 23 verse 4, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So the understanding of the five presence is what galvanizes you. Is what gives you the boldness, the resilience, and me to go through it, knowing fully well that God is with you. God is with you. And the beauty of it is that the one who is with you, our heavenly father, is not an absentee father. The Bible calls him the ever-present heir in trouble. The ever-present, your earthly father may abandon you in your season of desert but your heavenly father the ever present heir the one who was the one who is the one who is to come the one who has spoken the one who will never lie he said i will not leave you and i will not forsake you i uh, praise god and that is why when a child of god is going through the desert experience there is one thing that differentiates Christians, children of God, going through the desert experience and unbelievers going through a similar experience. One thing differentiates them, and that is what we call the peace of God. Peace. Every child of God that goes through the desert experience in, the, in your season of desert, you have of God. And that is what the Bible calls, according to the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, it says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. In other words, the peace that passes all understanding is the peace I would describe as the anointed peace. The anointed peace is the peace that though you are going through fire, you are going through dryness. You are going through a season of, 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 I mean, of confusion. You are going through a season of deprivation. You are going through a season of challenge. Yet, you are able to sleep like a babe. Yet, I mean, people look at you and say, ah, why is he still happy? Why is he looking so peaceful? Does he realize that he has lost everything? But in, in spite of this, you can still see him radiate peace. People can understand it. They can accept it. Why can't they understand it? Because it's the peace that is not given by the United Nation. This is the peace that no man can give. And because no man can give, no man can understand it. And that is why the psalmist says, he said, that will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. So the peace of God that passes all understanding is the exclusive preserve of the king. And that is what gives us the strength. That is what gives us the, 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 the grace. I mean, to take another step. And another step and another step and another step because we have the peace of god you can't touch it you can't dissect it you can't understand it because it is the peace that has its source in god and i speak to someone under the sound of my voice that that peace of god will galvanize your hearts today in the mighty name of jesus So this is what we enjoy as children of God. This is what marks us out when we go through the desert experience. Praise God. So the desert experience is real. And there are people in the Bible who went through their desert experience. Oh, look at someone like David. The Bible made us to understand in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 that when it was time for a king i mean to be to be anointed jesse i mean as samuel went into Je i mean jesse's house and he told jesse jesse bring out all your children all your boys 
and they brought them one after the other. Abihu, Abinadab, mentioned, and one after the other, God said, I've rejected him. I've rejected him. In the name of Jesus, may you not be rejected. And the Bible declared, having gone through all his sons, inquire from him, and hear all your, all your, all your children. And the father said, no. There remained yet the youngest, but is in the bush, is in the desert. My God. David, the youngest, was confined to that of life. Because according by his father's reckoning, David is there for success. Thank God that you are not who your parents says you are. You are not who your pastor says you are. You are not who your sibling says you are. You are who God says you are. The Bible says you shall be the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. The Bible says that when they say there is then you will say there is a lifting. Lifting is coming your way in your academic, in your marriage, in your career, in your health, in your relationship, in the mighty name of Jesus. So David's father had disqualified him. David's father had nullified him. David's father had concluded David a failure. And that is why when you go through the old Bible, there is nowhere where the name of David's father, I mean David's mother was mentioned. So which could be that David could have been or may have been a child of one nice stand. Thank God. I don't know what is nature or how you came into this world. It doesn't matter in whatever way you came into this world. God allowed it for a purpose. So you are born for a purpose. And there is a say that when the purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse of it becomes inevitable. I want you to know that there is a glory that is to be revealed. I want you to know that you are a man, a woman on a mission. You will not die in frustration in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know that as a man for your life, he says, for I know the plans that I have for you. God has a plan for your life. And I pray that the grace to discover, the grace to walk in the consciousness and in the understanding of divine direction, may you receive it today in the mighty name of Jesus. So which is to say, if success in life is by election, I mean, David would not have received any fault. In fact, his father would not have cast his fault for him. As his father asked him to remain in the the oldest should have been in the bush but in this case it was the youngest that was sent to look after the sheep brothers and sisters I don't know where you are maybe you are with the sheep now because being with the sheep is a place of loneliness it's a place of rejection it's a place of isolation it's a place where you smell the sheep but I want you to know you are coming out you are coming out of that desert lonely experience or maybe there is someone here or you say where will i be married i'm speaking as the servant of the lord that in the name that is above all three other names very very soon you will i mean your wedding card will be out in the name of jesus i say your wedding card will be out in the name of jesus i don't care your age we are serving a god of miracles God declares, I am the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me to do? And this reminds me of the story of one of my daughters in this land. She was in her late 40s or mid 40s. No husband, no one was coming to ask for her and the marriage. And she joined our church. The mother joined our church. An elderly woman. And every now and then, after service, Mama will come to me. Pastor, will my daughter ever be married? Will I ever see my grandchild? And I will assure Mama, Mama, not only that she will be married, you will see our children. And guess what? This lady, uh, uh, in that particular year, she traveled to China. I mean, to buy. I mean, for business. 
and on getting to, to China, that was her first time of stepping, I mean, uh, 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 of traveling to China. And on getting to China, she got to the market. She was confused because she could not speak Chinese. And while she was wondering, she saw a young man. And the young man also observed that this lady must be a stranger. So he walked up to her and inquire how are you what are you doing here oh he said oh i came from england i came for shopping but i couldn't really understand i mean anything they are saying and the young man said okay don't worry i understand the language i've been around for some time okay so i will help you i will take you around the market tomorrow give me your hotel address so they exchange contact the following day the young man went to go and pick up from our hotel and went to the market they did all the buying and the whatever and my daughter called me pastor i saw a young man i met a young man in china who actually supported me i mean in buying all that i came to buy and not only that he has promised to help me to cargo everything i mean to to england and i said and it, she said the fortunate thing is that this young man happened to be from your country I said, eh, from my country. And he has promised you that he will, I mean, he will help you to cargo. So she said, I've left everything, I mean, to his charge, to take care of. Hey, within me, I said, my God, I pray that this, my daughter has not fallen victim. But I said, give me the number of this person. So I called him, hey, how are you? And before you could say Jack Robinson. I got to understand that it's from my part of the country and we spoke and i was able to establish that this guy at least is genuine so and to god be the glory few days after the ghost came and this guy kept calling my daughter to cut the long story short my daughter walked up to me and said pastor this young man is expressing interest in me he's showing interest in me and i don't know because i mean i'm from another part of africa and he's from nigeria what would you say? I said, let's pray about it. So I called the young man. I said, if you want to marry my daughter, get ready to relocate to England. Ah, he said, Pastor, that will be a big challenge because my being in China is one way ticket. What is the guarantee that if I go to Nigeria to apply for UK visa that I will be given? I said, don't worry. If it is of God, it will be done and because what i'm going to pray i'm trusting god that god will make a way for me so to cut the long story short god almighty the miracle working god if i was the father of the day who would ever imagine that god will take a man from nigeria take him to china god will take a woman from the united kingdom take her to china and in the marketplace god finish them I mean, God finished the business. And today, they have two wonderful children. I don't know your situation. I don't know the, de the nature of your desert. But one thing I know, there is a God who is able to bring you out. And you are coming out of that, that dry place into a place that blossoms, into a place that flourishes the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yours may be career challenge. It may be career desert. And you are wondering, where will I ever amount? Will I ever amount to somebody in life? I have good news for you. I felt, as she was working, I mean, uh, uh, in one of the parastatas in Nigeria. And guess what? One day, I fall rang. And the other person said, what? Are you so, so, so person? She said, yes. Your attention is needed. Uh, uh, in Abuja, go to this so 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 hotel. Somebody is waiting there for you for an interview to be considered for. And the next available flight, she went straight to Abuja. On getting to this hotel, he met this man whom he has never seen before. And oh, you are welcome. Uh, uh, I've interviewed so many people for this particular. I mean, this is a governor sitting there, and who needed a secretary special assistant, I mean, uh, uh, SSG, secretary to the state of whatever. And after the old chat, he said, okay, congratulations, you have been appointed. To cut the long story short, this, my daughter is doing the second 
tap with this governor. I mean, whoever the person recommended her, they've never had any, any, I mean, any, any personal work want to walk stood for her. May I pray for someone under the sound of my voice that that man, that woman who is able to put in a word for you at an important place. May the Lord Almighty cause that man to speak up for you in the mighty name of Jesus. There are people who refer to as a power of destiny. They did what when his opportunity came and the Bible said David was sent for and as soon as David came in the Bible, I mean God told Samuel, here he is anointing and as soon as David was anointed, David went back into the desert but guess what while David was in the desert committed, faithful, dedicated the Bible declared there was a vacancy in the palace King Saul needed someone who is skillful and King Saul God is PR man. Send out an advert. I mean, to look, to get someone who's skillful in playing music. And guess what? Before the advert could be sent out, someone in, from the palace spoke. And he said, I knew David, the son of Jesse. Oh my God, my God. Please give me one somewhere. Chapter 16. Let's begin to look at it from verse 18 to see how a part of destiny spoke for David. One of the servants said to Saul, one of Jesus' son from Bethlehem, is a talented art player. Not only that, he is a brief warrior, a man of war, and has, and has good judgment. He is also a fine-looking young man. And the Lord is with him. My God, my God. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse to say, send me your son David, the shepherd. And guess what? The Bible says, and Jesse responded, and Jesse sent David. Then the next verse, verse 21. So David went to Saul and began serving him. Saul loved David very much, and David became his armor bearer. Verse 22. And the Bible says, then Saul sent word to Jesse, asking, Please let David remain in my service. I mean, in my service, for I am very pleased with him. My God, this is an opportunity that David did not solicit for. David did not send out his CV. Oh, there is someone under the sound of my voice. I'm speaking as the oracle of the Lord, that in the name that is above all names. That opportunity which you cannot imagine, that opportunity which you cannot fathom, that opportunity which you cannot comprehend is coming your way this year in the name of Jesus. How do I know that? The Bible declares, it says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask of things. Oh, somebody is in for an unbelievable breakthrough this year in the name of Jesus. David Someone spoke for David. Someone, someone put it employment. I mean, the king said, David has found favor. May you in David's wilderness, I mean, desert experience, river was of rivers of not be an exception in the name of Jesus. In that desert, in that area of rejection, I speak in the name of Jesus that the fine appointment is coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone here, you are going to receive a letter of good news in the name of Jesus very, very soon, asking you to come up, asking you to come up in the name of Jesus. You are coming up. You are coming up. Rivers in the desert. Can you still believe this promise? of God that all after all that you have gone through that it is still possible for you to sing your song of victory you will sing it I say you will sing your song of favorite I don't know how long you have been in that desert I don't know the size the intensity of that desert but one thing I know is that you are coming out you are coming out in the mighty name of Jesus yes you may look at it and say, Pastor, I don't see myself coming out. This desert is too dry. I've been here for long. I mean, how do I come out? 
When do I come out? Who will bring me out? Brothers and sisters, go with me. Take away where there seems to be no way. He walks in way we cannot see. He will make a way for you. He will be your guide. Hold you closely to his side. We love our strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. God will make it. A way for you. I say, God will make a way for you. Oh, you may look at it and say, Pastor, I don't see this coming to pass. Oh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26, let's see what Jesus said there. Yes, that describes your situation. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus said, He said, Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible. <laughs> Humanly speaking, it is impossible. In order or when you dissect your situation, when you look at how far you are being, when you look at the, the ah, it is impossible. He said, humanly speaking, it is possible. He said, but with God, everything is possible. You are coming out. You are coming out in the name of Jesus. Job 14, 14, he said, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the day of my appointed time, shall I wait until my change come? I want us to rise to our feet. I want us to pray. He says, if a man die, shall he live again? All the day of my appointed time, shall I wait until my change come? Your change will come. Your change will come. Your change will come. Ah, brothers and sisters, I want you to lift up your hands unto God. The one who is able to make a way. We are the way. The one who is able to reverse the irreversible, the one that opens and no man shuts, the one who shuts and no man opens, the one who says, I am the God of all flesh, is anything too hard for me to do. I want you to worship him. I want you to appraise, I mean, to appreciate him. I want you to exhort him. I want you to magnify him because he's the way maker, miracle worker, covenant keeping God, the one who says, I will bring you out. Let's worship him. Let's appreciate him. Let's tell him, Father, I believe in you. Father, I trust you. Father, I thank you because there is nothing that you cannot do. Oh, magnify him. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and bless his holy name. Let's thank him for the desert of the past that God has brought us through. The same God who brought us through the past desert, past experience, is able to bring us through this present desert. Let's worship him. Let's magnify him. Let's hallow his name. Let's declare that he is our father. He is our helper. He is our defender. He is our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Let's worship the beauty of holiness. Father, we worship you. Be magnified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. The Bible declares, Don't weep in me and dear for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hey, Father, let my money of joy be accelerated in the name of Jesus. Let my morning of joy be accelerated in the name of Jesus. Every opposition, every barrier to my morning of joy father let opposition be, 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 be humiliated let barriers be removed whatever may want to stand as an entrance as an opposition to the to to to, to the arrival to the manifestation of my morning of joy my morning of laughter my morning of celebration every opposition father let it be silenced in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever, oh Lord, that may want to prolong, whatever, oh Lord, that may want to stand as an interest, Father, today, oh Lord, by the power of life and resurrection, let obstacles be removed. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I, I want us to pray and say, Father, please visit the foundation of 
my the foundation of my family. The Bible declares every tree that does not bring forth good fruit shall be uprooted. Whatever, oh Lord, that is afflicting, whatever, oh Lord, that is attacking the foundation of my family, the foundation of my siblings, the foundation of this great university. Today, oh Lord, let something be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking, oh Lord, whatever, oh Lord, Daddy, that does not allow Daddy things to, 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 to blossom, to flourish in my family. Matana, Patana, today, oh Lord, let there be divine visitation. Visit the foundation of my home, the foundation of my family, the foundation of Caleb University. Whatever, oh Lord, that is not bringing glory to your name, today, let it be uprooted. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. The word of the Lord say, Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Say, Father, by the power that created the heaven and the earth, lift me up. Lift me beyond the imaginations of my enemies beyond the imaginations of my parents, beyond the imaginations of my friends. Father, King of glory, you are the lifter of my head. Father, lift me, Lord. Let me arise and let me begin to shine. In the name of Jesus, in the midst of opposition, let me arise and begin to shine. In the midst, oh Lord, Father, King of glory, of the enemy, Father, anoint my head that I may arise and begin to shine in the mighty name of Jesus. In my academics, oh Lord, let me begin to shine. In all my courses, let me begin to shine. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to still pray. I want you to call upon God. As a father, you are the God who took David from following the sheep to become a leader of a nation. Father, I'm asking, oh Lord, that the same anointing, the same grace, oh Lord, will locate me, Lord, and use me for your glory. Father, I'm asking, oh Lord, Daddy, it is in your power to promote. The Bible promotion does not come from the east or from the west, nor from the north. Promotion comes from above. Father, you are the promoter of men. Promote me. Promote my family. Promote this great university. Make it to become a global institution. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my Lord, Daddy, I'm asking, oh Lord, that by the power of creation, by the power of lifting, Father, I'm asking, oh Lord, let your power of lifting be released upon me, oh Lord, to take me, oh Lord, from the dunghill of life. The Bible declares that the Lord is the one who lifts the poor from the dunghill and make him to sit with princes, even with the princes of, people, of his people. Father, let there be a supernatural lifting in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, catapult me to, into the limelight after the order of David, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, my Lord, Daddy, I'm asking, oh Lord, King of glory, let my season of rising be ushered in, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The word of the Lord says, associate yourself, all ye people, and ye shall be wanted to cry to God. Say, Father, every opposition, Every opposition, every gang up from the pit of hell against my rising, against, oh Lord, my, my, my joy. Father, let opposition be silenced. Let opposition be distressed. Opposition from the father's side, opposition from the mother's side, opposition against Caleb University. Let them be silent completely in the mighty name of Jesus. My father, my Lord, Daddy, we pray, oh Lord, King of glory, for every man, every woman under the sound of my voice, every opposition, Father, today, oh Lord, in, in unity, we silence it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray for this great university that the Lord Almighty shall continue to be a wall of fire round about Caleb University that no arrow, no weapon, no pestilence shall visit this great university, this great campus, in the name of Jesus, that the Lord Almighty will be a wall of fire in the name of Jesus. 
that the Lord Almighty will cause his peace I mean to permeate the entire campus that in the name that is above all name there shall be no weeping there shall be no gnashing of teeth there shall be no loss of life in Caleb University in the name of Jesus that by the power that created the heaven and the earth 24 by 7 the angels of the Lord will encamp around about Caleb University in the mighty of Jesus Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to cry unto God. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord. Today. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord. Today, the Bible declared, and God remembered Rachel. Say, Father, today, O Lord, let the book of remembrance be open unto me, O Lord. And Father, I'm asking, O Lord, Daddy, let me open, let me enter, O Lord, into a dimension, O Lord, where a pass of destiny will remember me. Any man, any woman that is in a position to help me, oh Lord, wherever I have been forgotten. Father, I'm asking, oh Lord, Daddy, let me be remembered. Let me be remembered, oh Lord, for honor, for promotion. Let me be remembered, oh Lord, for favor. In the name of Jesus, whatever, oh Lord, contrary handwriting, whatever negative handwriting, whatever information that may be speaking against me, Father, today, oh Lord, let the book of remembrance be open unto me, unto my children. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Finally, I want you to pray for yourself. Maybe there is an issue in your life. The word of the Lord says, call unto me. That's uh, uh, Psalm 50 verse 15. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. Praise God. Call unto me. The word of the Lord says, call unto me. Jeremiah chapter 3, 33 verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer you. The Bible said, this poor man cried unto God. And God inclined unto his cry. I want you to call upon God. Concerned about that particular situation. It is you who knows it. It is you who understands it. I want you to be specific. Bring that pain before God. Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know of. I want you to call upon God. I want you to call upon God. Be specific. Mention that situation. Tell God. So shall it be. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. Before I pray the final prayer. Maybe there are someone under the sound of my voice. You have not had an encounter. You have not met Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Remember it. But I want you to pray this final prayer. If you have not had Jesus, I mean, made him your Lord and your Savior. Or you want to renew your relationship with him. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you because I know that you are the only one who can make rivers out of the desert and I know you are the only one who can bring me out of this desert experience I come before you today I recognize that you came into the world and you died for sinners and you died for me Jesus I give my heart unto you this day please receive me cleanse me from all my sins blot out my names from the book of death I write my name in the book of life. I surrender my life unto you. Have your way in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Everlasting Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, King of Lord, because we know, O oh Lord, that your word, which you have spoken, shall not go without accomplishing the purpose for which it is desired. Lord, I'm asking, O oh Lord, concerning every prayer, 
and even the one we have been able to pray. We thank you because you are the God who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask of them. Lord, and pray, O oh Lord, that the aftermath of today's prayer meeting shall be mega testimony in every life and in this great university in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I am pray, O oh Lord, Father, that in the name of Jesus, the rivers of faithful, rivers of, of joy, rivers of provision, rivers of protection, rivers of, of, of mega open doors begin to open in Caleb University in the name of Jesus. Every side, everywhere on this campus, Father, let it be rivers. Rivers, rivers, we forbid dryness. We forbid dryness on every side. We forbid dryness at family level, individual level, departmental level, I mean, uh, 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 at, at the, the community level on Caleb University in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray a peace of God that Pastor Lord of the Sunday shall be resident. I mean, in this great university, 24 by 7, in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare in the name that is above all name, there will be no calamity. There shall be no disaster in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall be no sudden occurrence in this great university in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, I'm asking, oh Lord, you are the great lifter. Father, I'm asking that you will cause this great institution to become a global phenomenon in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh Lord, for all the lecturers. I pray, oh Lord, for all the non-teaching staff. I pray for everyone, the students, everyone in this great university. I declare in the name of Jesus that the peace of God that passes all understanding shall continue to guard your heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I can't hear that hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. And that is why we are glad in it. We want to appreciate the almighty God for this wonderful presentation. Taking us through the realm of desert to the provision of river. Desert is nothing but uh, desolation is nothing but dryness. But the presence of God into the dryness changes the situation and makes it very fruitful and river flowing. We want to appreciate our beloved pastor Abraham Adegoke, one of our erudite, talented, and anointed men of God in ridiculous of God in the united kingdom we celebrate you sir thank god for giving us a very live effect of this ministration today wherever you are we celebrate you and we are the almighty god to keep perfect changing the situation say so if men were to vote david's parents would not vote for him to become a king but because god was involved david became a king i celebrate you sir we thank god for that great illumination. We thank God for that wonderful, wonderful message. It's wonderful. And we have to package that message and keep on uh, viewing it over and over so that we can get the nitty gritty. We thank the Almighty God for a wonderful Vice Chancellor and the entire management team for this wonderful program. We appreciate you, sir, because if not for spiritual dis discernment. There is no way we could be able to identify a, a, a messenger of the gospel far away in the United Kingdom and bring it in. It is a wonderful uh, selection and it's a wonderful ministration. We thank the management for this decision. We appreciate the Senate of the University. We appreciate the student's body. We thank God for the committee that put this together. 
and we say the almighty God shall come to bless you. We want to thank all our students, great students. I keep on saying that when you talk about diligence, think of Caleb University students. When you talk of commitment, think of Caleb University students. When you talk of diligent ability to deliver knowledge, think of Caleb University students. I celebrate you, Caleb University students. That is the best set of students you can ever imagine all over the world. I've been privileged to walk around many, many institutions, not only in this country, far outside the country, and I can say boldly that we have the best set of students in Caleb University. Once again, we want to celebrate you. We want to thank the Almighty God for every one of us today, and God bless you all. Amen.
has settled. It is not an error that this thing came up rivers in the desert. I know that what God has started today, He will perfect in our lives in Jesus' name. That voice of the enemy you have been hearing, that as soon as God is assuring you, it is where my son, it is where my daughter, that voice you keep hearing that say, don't deceive yourself, it is silenced permanently in Jesus' name. Any association that any of us here is having that is sowing seeds of doubts, seed of fear, seed of not walking upright in any of our hearts. Father, let there be a permanent break with our association in Jesus' name. Lord, we have families, but no, they are really your families. We can't help them. If you